All right, May 19th. Uh, this camera's getting low, the battery light's flashing. I'll try to go quick. I got a, that hen's broody. I gotta set her, snatch her eggs up, put them in the incubator. That one's empty. I wanna fill that full of merns. Uh, there's the brown clown and one of my half uh, Mexican wild males uh, with uh, crossed with Canadian stock with my old brown clown. Uh, one of my older hens, about three or four years old, good layer. This hen is uh, she's on um, she's on mountain eggs, and that one's on mountain eggs. And those two, and this one. And this one. Not supposed to hatch in, oh, four or five days, I guess it is. Yeah, that's batch number three. So, this one. Yeah, so I, I've got a, a, a couple here. To set still I've got to get some a lot more eggs in the incubator now this hen I chucked some of that that batch that I had up in the brooder up in the brooders that I just took a video of I chucked some of that batch underneath her last minute because I didn't want to fill my brooders a whole up because uh, I got so many more chicks hatched so I said shit you know she had some I, the only reason I did it is because she she hatched three of those young bantam chicks and I didn't realize she was setting on those eggs that long so I said well she hatched the chicks I'll take the chicks real quick slide some eggs under her and she went right back on the nest and hatched just about every one of them then left the nest so I took the other eggs that were pipped I put them back in my my hatcher and they hatched so so all's good um yeah she's got about eight or nine chicks and all so I got close to 40 40 mountain quail chicks and it's May 19th and I've got settings galore and uh, there's an empty pen I've got two more young hens set my youngest hens they're gonna go in there uh, one of them's gonna go in there and one of them's gonna stay where she is and I'm gonna take the rooster out and put him in one of my little pens up back yeah. And when these hens go broody, they hold on that. That's good. They take a fucking shit. Like a dog. I tell you what. Good lawn fertilizer. Grass grows green with that. I grab it and take it right out of the pens every time. Every day. You know, they'll do that about twice a day. And get up and eat and drink and shit. No. Throw it out, you know, it keeps the pens clean. Yeah. So better for the chicks that way. Well, yeah, ten pens down here and everything's going pretty smooth so far. So far it's a well oiled machine. And in just over a week I'll be setting traps. I got oh close to two hundred here and I got two hundred and fifty down down to the point down by the wharf where I keep my traps I'm gonna set those first and I just bought a new flatbed trailer I had my old one bought it back in 2000 brand new and uh, I hit the goddamn Bailey Island Bridge they, they did some work on it and they said it's the same width and I guess it is but they put a curbing in it and I was over just an inch too close wicked narrow bridge and I hit it a few years ago put a new axle on but it's been eating up tires ever since I had to put on a couple sets of new tires so I brought it down here it's been sitting down in the garage since last summer and every week oh next week next week oh we get to it in a couple of weeks couple of weeks and here it is I've been down there for well I don't know probably since last August or something um, you know probably eight months never touched it they're supposed to they figured uh, new leaf springs would would take care of the problem and 
Uh, so I said, you know what, the hell with it. I got this for $3,000, brand new, and I'll sell that. Guys, if I get 500 bucks out of it, I'll be, I'll be happy. That trailer didn't owe me nothing. I used that and used it and used it, and and uh, so it's a 16 footer, 16 foot by 7 feet. And I can put. Oh, if I wanted to, I could stack 64 footers on it. You know, four rows. And uh, yep, this is a good one. Dual axle, and rugged. Um, Boat's going in the water in about a week, and I'm probably about better than three quarters done going through my rope, and I still got some buoys to paint, so it's the prep work that kills me, but uh, I'll get there, I'll get there right, just about right on time, so mountain quail are still going pretty strong, uh, they're going just as good as they have been, so uh, yeah, I've been getting oh three or four eggs one day, maybe five the next, and they'll maybe two or three, then five, then four, and yeah, they, so they, you know, they've been coming, been setting little batches of 25, 30 every week out of them, and I got a friend of mine that just does it as a hobby, and he doesn't have Facebook or any of that, and he's giving me his eggs. You know, just uh, trading them for, for lobster feed. So, <laughs> so I, I can't go wrong there. So they're, they're, they're doing good. They're doing good. I might clean this pen pretty soon. It's not that bad, but I like them right clean, clean. So, yeah. Well, I guess I'm lucky the camera recorded this long. I can make it over here. Yeah, these are the two young hens. That and I sat on the same nest. <laughs> so, clean this one out. Uh, this one is my old pen. The roof was old, old, old shingles I did over 20 years ago. It was leaking down that seam, so I, I stripped the shingles off it. And I was going to just strap the roof and put the, you know, put a, put a, a little joist across and strap it and put not a lot but you know what, I think I'll just put this screw this plywood back down and put metal roofing right over it, put the shelf back up and this pen will last as long as I, I ever I ever do it. So um, and put the water seal to the bottom and the back and the bottoms of the legs and this pen will go me quite a while. I just tore down old sparkles pen that pretty well had it that one's pretty you know, ragged uh, moonbeams pen and I'm debating whether I salvage that or not it's not the, you know I'll have to rebuild part of it and I said I wasn't going to build any more pens but I got a nice little spot in here and I am going to have a shitload of birds this summer so I'm going to have to I got three pairs of Bensons in here and I got two two empties these are the 4x12s, 4x4 hutch with a 4x8 run. And it's a big pen for just a pair, but those Bensons, they, they, you know, they love those pens. They just don't like these these 4x8s. I have to keep them in there in the winter um, just so they won't freeze their feet because they're real prone to frostbite. Uh, but yep, yeah. that's that. Oh, by the way, my most important urns. That's the wild male and one of my young domestic hens. She's laid two eggs so far. So that's the that's Digger and Anna. And she builds a nice little nest. And uh, but today she laid the second egg right down there. But even uh, I put a bob white dummy egg in there, but they buried it. So well, I don't care as long as she lays and they're fertile and they don't break them. And I need the others to get rolling, especially my other two most important ones, the ones of the half wild, half Canadian males. Things would go like they used to, I could produce 50 birds to a pair. So we'll see what happens. All right, that's it.